Hey guys, this week we're talking all about dried beans and what to do if your pot cooks too hot. Oh, while having a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another edition of As Good As It Gets. I'm Chris. And I'm Mikey. And this is a weekly chat from our kitchen where we answer your questions. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. Easter has come and gone. Yes. So we had a little bit of a break, and now we return you to your regular scheduled program. Yep. We've had some good time off, kind of rest and relax, and, well, we taped a lot of stuff. So maybe y'all rested and relaxed from us, but we was taping. <laughs> So you'll see that um, starting this week uh, coming up there. We've got some new cooking Chris's dishes. And of course, we've got some vlog stuff and some fun stuff for me and Miss Ads. So yeah, not quite sure all of what's going to go up there, but we'll have a full week's full of content for you. That is faux show. Yeah. Have you missed us? <laughs> <laughs> and so also last week we hit 7,000 subscribers. Seven. Woo yeah, that's the right number of fingers. 7,000. We are over 7,000 thousand subscribers now and for some reason we have had a huge jump in subscribers this week awesome so we're like over maybe it's because we shut up <laughs> yeah, it's like oh well we'll subscribe if they just shut up for a minute everybody i've been seeing a lot of comments on the older stuff so y'all did do the reruns thank you um but we are back and we're gonna go for shoot we're gonna shoot for eight we're shooting for eight thousand yep so so yeah and we also have um our t-shirts are still on sale my drink is in the way you're fine there my t-shirts are my t-shirts our t-shirts are still on my t-shirts too <laughs> our t-shirts are still on sale but this was the winter 2017 design so we need a new design so we thought because everybody's been asking do you guys want the next Croc Posse t-shirt to say something like, I'll clean that up later, and then have the Croc Posse logo, because that's the catchphrase that Mikey always uses during his, um... Sometimes I actually do. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that should it's go more, on the bottom. Sometimes it, I actually do. It's more of a saying. Um, <laughs> than an actual thing that happens. Um, but, um... Or do you guys have another thing from the show or from um, just our channel that you th that you would like to see on the t-shirts? Yeah. So maybe just my face and then her, and you can see the quotations of Chris going, "Oh, Mikey." Oh no. No. You don't <laughs> no. Think so? No. So if you have an idea, leave it down below. Or if you just like to see the traditional t-shirt, maybe with just a different design, leave that down below. We'll make sure and have tank tops and t-shirts. Um, for the summer so that everybody can um, get um, whatever design or whatever type of shirt mm -hmm. that they they enjoy. And I also want to give a quick shout out and thank you to somebody oh. um, and that is Kathy Powell. She noted on our Facebook uh, group um, she noted that uh, you know of course we hit we got over we got over 7,001 subscribers on April the 12th and uh, I didn't know that. I was on my way home actually when um, she had put that on there. And so I was like super excited. That was awesome. You know, I said that this made my night. And then um, she puts out a call out to the Croc Posse and uh, saying, you know, while we take a break, um, to let your friends know on your Facebook page um, about our channel and then the blogs. And absolutely, thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, we want to grow this channel. We want to build up our crock posse and that is one way to do it if y'all would that would be fantastic if you've got a facebook page give a shout um saying uh you know hey check out the, this idiot who cooks his wife's really good dishes on on the youtube channel um or send them over to recipes of the crock we would greatly appreciate that facebook twitter myspace myspace really no Snapchat. but thank you kathy that was very very nice yes we love you and thank you so much for that how about some reader questions now let's do some reader emails oh Reader emails. All right, what do we have today for reader emails? Okay, so we with people having leftover ham and they might have fr they've um, freezed it. Frozen why, it. Why? Why are my words? <laughs> I'm having. They might words. have freezed it. They might my have wife's from it. Paoli, they might Indiana. Have okay now. <laughs> no. Um. So they either um 
put it away or it may be gone by now but people have been asking this we've been getting a lot of questions and NJ's question kind of puts it all together she said um, have you or Aunt Lou tried cooking dried beans in the crock pot like pinto beans and ham of course navy beans and ham of course or salt pork um, if so what's been your experience any tips and the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, we've got a, uh, a couple, maybe three recipes I know of on the site. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, uh, in general, is an opinion changer. I grew up not liking lima beans at all. Oh. I just thought they were the grossest, nastiest thing. Lima beans, ew. And it's because you grow up, you think lima beans and Brussels sprouts are gross. Turns out if you cook them right, neither one are. <laughs> maybe we should do a Brussels sprout recipe sometime. But anyway, that was my squirrel moment for the show. Um, lima beans. We did a dried lima bean um, with ham and it did it in the slow cooker and we got the recipe um, by just kind of experimenting. Well, we had been on vacation mm -hmm. and we had went to one of our favorite kind of hole in the wall places and they had served lima beans with ham. Has anybody Southern ever heard style. of a restaurant called Buckner's down in Georgia? It's in Butts County off of Buck Snort Road. I kid you not and it's a little place off the road just away from the truck stops and it's like one of the most popular little local joints in fact one time we were coming through on a Sunday afternoon about four o'clock and all them them folks that get out of church real late were just showing up and there was no room for us we had no to miss room out. In, no. but the next time that we got to come through we went down there and they had lima beans um, they kind of do everything on a giant lazy Susan and bring it out family style and they've got a lima beans and ham recipe that was just to die for. They were velvety and soft and almost buttery, really. They were just, wow. they were the one of well, the best it tasted, things Well, it tastes a lot like a ham and beans, just yeah. a traditional ham and beans. So, so we have that one. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, we have split pea soup, which was, is done with dry um, split peas. And then, of course, we have a traditional ham and beans, like what you're asking about, um, that we made. I don't know if we used Great Northern or Navy beans, but either way, we used um, the um, the white bean. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, my mom cooked <coughs> pinto <coughs> beans. Did your mom use pinto or Navy No, beans? mom used uh, Navy beans. Yeah. Mom always used I them. prefer Navy beans because they're smoother. I, I just think that they're smoother when right. you like eat them at the end and so anyhow um, on the blog we'll put a link down below to those recipes um, so you can access them but um, the only tip I can say is cook according to the recipe and then towards the end if you want them creamier um, smash some of them up against the side to break a few of them apart and then stir that in and it'll thicken it up and make them creamier mm -hmm. so that that's kind of our tip um, but um, ironically, you you were asking about it, and isn't it ironic? <laughs> and we got an email from Karen, um, and we'll show a picture where she made um, her uh, our um, ham and beans in her in her ninja, mm -hmm. her new ninja. You remember Karen who got the ninja? And so um, glad to see you're using it. Yes, and so that brings us to our second question, which I'm not going to read because I've been getting this a lot too, and a lot of people have been mentioning it. <clears throat> uh, we've been hearing from people that yeah, the ninja cooks a lot hotter than um, uh, the older slow cookers, and I would say the ninja is pretty on par with most new slow cookers and right. how hot it cooks. Um, Even on the warm setting, it's going to cook above what 165 yeah, or something I, to make sure. That I don't know the exacts, but I will say it does. If you're comparing that to your tried and true slow cooker you had for years and years and years and years, the Ninja is going to cook a lot hotter yep. because almost all of the new ones that are out now mm -hmm. cook so much hotter. And so, anyhow, um, with all that said, we thought we might talk a little bit about. I mean, we always tell you watch any recipe make sure that you um make sure that you um you know know how it cooks in your unit the first time you do it don't ever just say oh that says four hours and then come back four hours later you mm -hmm. should be checking it to make sure it's not burning or um, make sure it's cooking properly and so what are we thought we would discuss some of the strategies if something's cooking too hot um 
So what are some of the things that you think about if something might cook a little hotter? Well, first off, time to turn the heat down. Uh-huh. If it's cooking too hot, turn the heat down. If it's cooking too hot on one side, that's just uh, the element. Mm -hmm. Rotate it. That's one way to do yep. it. So it'll start to even out on the other side, depending on what you're cooking. Um, keep stirring. That's another thing. One thing you don't, especially if you have something that's like uh, has cheese mm -hmm. or dairy in it, um, you know what happens when you burn a dairy product. Well, to go back to what you said about um, cooking something that if you are always having problems with it cooking way too hot, one of the tips that we use is to cook on the low setting but use the high cooking time as your basic guideline. So that kind of lets you um, keep a closer eye on it. So that, that's one of the tips. What about removing the lid so it pulls some of the heat out? Mm, I, I don't know that I would do that necessarily right off the bat. We usually remove the lid towards the end to help um, any excess liquid evaporate. So and this, while we're talking about this, this isn't just about the Ninja. This is in general about a slow cooker that might cook hotter than what you're used to. So. What you might have a problem with is the outside gets done if you're baking something up and the center isn't quite done. And so if that's what's starting to happen and you're starting to get concerned that the center is not going to get done, um, pulling that lid completely off or at least um, pulling it over to the side a little so that some of that liquid can escape um, is one of the ways to um, kind of fix that. Of course, we say it all the time about the pot inside the pot. So you want to, if you, if you're not filling your slow cooker up to at least a half and preferably two thirds full, then it is going to cook hotter and faster no matter what you do. So putting a bowl, a heat safe, oven safe bowl inside and cooking inside of that bowl inside of your should um, make that fill up and make it cook slower. Right. Um, so those are just some tips. I don't advise, now I know other people do, but I do not advise like cooking on the warm setting. There's a reason why they've upped the temperatures and I don't, I would not, I would not cook like at the beginning on the warm setting. Now something else you could possibly do is reduce, if you're going to be away from home, you could, but I wouldn't do this the first time. I would test this at home first. You could play with the idea of cooking it on high or low for an hour or two to get it started and then let the warm feature kick in. Um, but again, I would watch, it would all depend on what the recipe was and I would have tried it at home while I was there to watch it before I would ever try and do that away from home. But those are just some strategies to kind of think through. Cool. All right, what do you say that we go to our weekly menu? How do you want to transition? Let's do I Dream a Genie. One, two, three. All right, now it is time for the weekly menu. What you got, baby? Yes, we have creamy barbecue ranch dip. This is a yummy, yummy, yummy dip. We had those with those boneless chicken mm -hmm. wings a while back. They're very yummy. So definitely um, a good thing for parties and stuff. Um, our breakfast, Southwest breakfast casserole. This is an Aunt Lou dish. Mm, a little Tex-Mex going oh, on. Oh, yeah. And I love those egg casseroles. So this is a really, really good one. Um, okay. On Monday, we have my corn pudding with Aunt Lou's poppy seed chicken. Yummy, yummy. You should try that. I wouldn't mind trying that. Ah, because he's all about the poppy seeds. I love poppy seeds. Yes. Then on Tuesday is my slow cooker pot roast with veggies. This is an older recipe on the site, but very, very popular and people very much love it. Mm -hmm. So we love it, love it, love it. On Wednesday is one of Mikey's favorites. We're either doing leftovers or Italian meatball soup. This is one of the ones that I've taken into work before and everybody's like, oh, what is that smell? It's so good. <laughs> it's one of the best recipes ever. It's so easy to put together. Yep. And on Thursday, we're getting our broiler out and showing you how to do a crispy slow cooker chicken with Lou's country style scalloped potatoes. I like things country style. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> That's not something we want to put in the show, honey. Woo! Everybody say, bless you, Chris. <laughs> I have really bad allergies right now. <clears throat> okay, and on Friday, 
Um, maybe because we just recently made this and mm -hmm. it's so yummy. I was like, I'm putting that on the menu. Yes. Um, spaghetti with homemade meatballs. And this can be done in the Instant Pot or be done um, in the crock pot. And so. if y'all have not seen that, that it was our re most recent Cooking Chris's Dishes, the one we put up uh, just a couple days ago. Um, so very easy yummy to put yummy. together. It's like you want to have spaghetti meatballs in like a half hour. Yes. So, ha so easy to have. Yes. And then for Saturday, I put cherry crisp because we made the crisp um, a, f a few days ago yeah, or last. The razzleberry. Sometime we made it. Anyhow, I was like, I'm going to give the cherry lovers the cherry version. And so. you'll be very happy with that. So, just to recap. Yes. That is our menu. Yes. And also to recap, we're back. Yes. Did you miss us? <laughs> and we're very, very happy to, uh, again, say, uh, to bring more content. We're absolutely going to do uh, a Church Song Sunday tomorrow afternoon, or if you're watching this on the newsletter, today, 2 p.m. Is it Eastern Standard Time? or what's it's that? Daylight. Eastern, it's daylight. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Look for us sometime around your 2 o'clock and see if we were there or not, <laughs> depending on where you're at. And then also, again, T-shirts. Yes. You wanted to say, I'll clean that up later. Or Do y'all have a suggestion? Put a suggestion. Put a comment down below. What would you want your t-shirt to say? Or do you just want to see my pretty face on there where it says, oh, Mikey. Oh, Mikey. Oh, come on. Who doesn't want me on their chest? Yeah. <laughs> or not? Oh, no. no. No, no. I mean, like my... <clears throat> let's, um, let's just end the show. Yes. Hey, it's good seeing you guys. Send us your questions. Send us your comments. Bye. Bye. Pay no attention to the man who's standing directly behind me. Hey guys, this week we're talking... <laughs> don't! This is what happens when you work with animals. <laughs> Crock Posse shout out! <laughs>